Hello, Holger. Hello, Magdi. Hi, Holger. Um, the, um, first of all, thank you. It feels really um, wonderful, open, and is there a difference? And I don't want to split hair, and it's not about to be clever or something, but stillness and gentleness. Is there any difference or are there? It seems like the gentleness is more important than the stillness. But I don't know. That's why it just came up, this idea. Mm -hmm. so, right. Maybe maybe the best form of gentleness is the stillness. It's, it's, it's a stillness that's also very present. It's a it's an alive stillness. So it's a, a stillness that is a sort of like a, a full availability. But it's it's an availability availability that does not carry the past. It's uh, like a, a form of open listening, and it's really beautiful to be in the company of somebody that is fully listening. We love that. To there is space. We we experience the 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 peace actually the and non threatening uh, aspect. That's very gentle in a way. Uh, we could use we could use that word. I, I I love the word the word gentleness, and I love gentleness itself. Uh, in, the way one walks, the way one talks, one listens, one perceives. So it's a, a gentle stillness, or is it? Is stillness is a high form of gentleness. Before before the satsang, I had a short walk around the block, and it just felt just a thought arose that all my limitations I experienced in the past that they really were just based on belief, because I felt so free, so open, and it just was all of this just belief. All my suffering, my struggle, and yeah, right. I mean, the, it's deeply rooted in us the the me belief and the me feeling. You know, from very young age, we were identified with. Our image, our parents, we, we inherit that we inherit the the image, uh, self defense, self defense, and and other uh, ways in which we build the character in the dream character. It's built and in in. in memory and in in sensations it's built into the body and and in the psyche in the in the way we refer to ourselves and we refer to our family our parents and our friends it's a, there isn't a sort of a, a an inherited understanding about presence or about beingness or about love What's inherited in more is more aspects of uh, personal, the personal survival and personal strategies. 
Um, yeah, so, so as we are living in 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 the me bubble, in the me impression, in the dream character, we have we are we are already inside. We are already in the world of we're in the realm of belief. We're in, inside of it already, and our movements, our thoughts, are. Uh, infected or affected <laughs> by by that by the the envelope the me envelope the sort of the overriding sense of me overriding sense of personhood of personal character and i remember when i was a young boy i was in an all boy school and uh the, there was a something in the air uh, sort of a sense of threat in the air because the boys they can be dangerous you know they not just in like mocking of you and but also even like physically ganging ganging up on you and so that was in the air and uh you were well served to join a gang a gang, a group, uh, to join a group of boys with a leader. Um, and if you if you weren't uh, part of a particular group, then you had to have a really good skill, survival skill, to sort of befriend various groups enough for you to maintain your independence from the group and at the same time be accepted to a certain anyways uh, so when you're living in boarding school that's a very big thing in your in your in your in your life in your thinking and your relationships and, and as an example as an example but then the, there is the glimpse uh, that about reality about the self about awareness and that is uh, that has uh, deeply transformative, liberating um, quality to it. So once we have a glimpse of uh, being, of, of presence, it, it becomes available to us. It, it, although it always was, but it becomes available to us in a more tangible way, you know, more direct way. It's like somehow the spring you discovered the spring around the corner of your house from your house so you know where to go for uh, fresh water except except that the spring is is closer than around the corner of your house you know This, this invisible reality, this ordinary awareness, which is holy. And how precious is coming together and speaking about those things. I mean, there's really nothing 
I could think about that would be more important and relevant because all the rest just comes and goes. And I mean, once we sort of get in touch with that, once it's, it's revealed to us, then all the uh, borders of our cocoon sort of start to dissolve. And we find that uh, coming together in satsang, of course, is very sacred. But then everything becomes sacred. Walking around the block, uh, hearing the birds, moving on the side of the sidewalk to let somebody uh, who's walking in the other direction. It's consciousness which is a holy awareness which is holy. So, in this, we talk about reality in these meetings when we also taste it with the savoring of of being a savoring of this reality in the meetings in the in the satsang but it, it it's about uh, having a direct experience of our true self and this experience of a true self not only leads to the understanding that all is the self, that there are no borders, there isn't separation, there's no separation anywhere, at least not only to that understanding, but also the experience of everything is myself, everything is the self, everything, my entire experience is one wholesome holiness. I still, once in a while, the feeling, wow, this is too good to be true. Like being so amazed. <laughs> and how generous. I mean, it, it's just the word generous is just on my side that comes up. Like all of it, it's just such a rich abundance. All this energy. I, now I'm just limiting it by calling it energy. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Foolish words. And wonderful words. I just see the, the beauty of, I don't need to discuss this with my mind. I can just rest in, I don't know. I yeah. mean, and, and let whatever needs to come to me will come. And I don't need to create another narrative now about, it is so relaxing. You know, the, the blessing of the mind comes from the understanding. The mind is enlightened by the understanding and by the peace because the, the understanding brings some tranquility to the mind and the peace mm, pacifies the mind the mind arises when it's needed for particular reasons But it's really nice to experience the tranquility, inner tranquility in the midst of activity, whatever activities are required. But there's an inner tranquility, which is the tranquility of, of the self, which also affects the mind, and the mind functions in a more harmonious and effective, efficient way. Mm. 
the seeking aspect of the mind is a habit. It's a habit that maintains itself as long as the, the me belief, belief is in the background. As long as the me belief is in the background, the tendencies of the mind to seek and avoid uh, are fueled. To be completely not knowing is is complete presence, you see. It's a, it's a it's a full not knowing, not an empty one. Thank you, Magdi. Okay, hold on.